People deluded, I'm back again. I'm here with a special guest. Liam, how you doing, man? You good? Yeah, I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Like we was talking before I started recording, it's boiling today, bro. So I'm a bit I'm a bit frustrated. <laughs> I can't turn on the fan because obviously we're doing this. But other than that, yeah. my family's good. Hope the same can be said for you and yours, my guy. Yeah, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing to pass time during this lockdown? Uh, you know, I've just been training, keeping my mind active. Like, um, I've had a lot of Zooms, man. Uh, just keep trying to keep busy, like, stay in contact with friends, family, make sure everyone's okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. In terms of your teammates and your coaches, have you had much dialogue with them? Do you continuously speak with them and whatnot? Yeah, I mean, we have, we have Zooms, like, what is it, four times a week. So, we speak a lot, like, in terms of coaches and as a team together. Uh, I mean, we have our group chats, we talk, um, and we st I've started to see a couple of the teammates as well, like, we do some training together. So, mm. um, yeah, man, we've been trying to keep active and trying to keep together. Mm -hmm. Obviously, what training have you been able to do? Because, I mean, it goes without saying you lot are socially distancing. Obviously, there's not much you can do, but what are you yeah. doing to just have, to just keep ticking over in some way? Yeah, I mean, we do, we do a lot of running together. Um, we, we on a on a Zoom call we have like a body weight session to like core and all that. But mm. when I go and see um like me and my guy Jaden is a goalkeeper and like it, it just helps. I'm a striker, he's a goalkeeper. Oh yeah. Um so like we get to practice what we need to work on and stay within like two meters, so which is good. Uh, uh, uh. Well, in terms of running, what is it like five K in that? Oh uh, no, nah, no, I don't even like doing that, you know. I, I I've done <laughs> it a couple of times. Why is that? <laughs> but um, Why? You know what, you know what it's, I don't think it helps me personally. I think that's just a basic run. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, like so if, I, if I'm doing on? something. I like the short, because I'm like a, I'm a powerful player. So like I'm a short, sharp person. So I do the short, sharp runs. Mm. Um, I mean, by all means, we all have to do long runs. I don't like bagging them out daily. Like, it's, mm. it's not my type of thing. Mm, mm, mm. Sounds like you're chickening from it, man. I, <laughs> the argument's not sounding too strong. I'm not gonna lie. To you, man. It's not gonna lie. Oh, man. You, you, you kind of mentioned like how you are as a player indirectly, yeah. and that you're, you know you're short and sharp and things. For no one who's, if someone's never watched you before, better yet, how would you describe yourself as a player? Um, I'm say I'm quite a sharp player. Um, someone that's always looking to in and around the box, trying to get on something. Uh, I'm versatile. I can play in the, all the front three or number 10. Um, so I think that helps me going forward. Um, mm. And yeah, I'm saying I'm quite a powerful player. Mm -hmm. that, and I'd agree with it. I'd agree with everything you said. I didn't want to... It's, it's one thing me saying that, <laughs> but it's another thing coming out of the horse's mouth. You mentioned you're comfortable in the front four positions, but I have to ask mm. you, and I, I think I kind of know the answer, where... Obviously, I think you'd do anything for the manager, but where in an ideal world, if you could pick the team, where would you shot your, slot yourself up? I'll play up front. That's my favourite position. Striker, you know. That's, that, to me, I've always been like, that's the glory position. You know, that's the best position. Everyone wants to play there. Uh, mm. But, you know, sometimes you've got to do what you have to do and move about. Mm. Have you always been a striker, though? Like, always? Yeah, I mean, from, from young, from young days, I was a striker. Uh, I was always a lot quicker, stronger than everyone. Um, so, I've always been a striker, yeah. But, I mean... As you get older, you know, academies move you about, try you out, trying to slot you into the first team, how you're going to fit in. So, yeah, I don't mind. Did you have a period, like, obviously you mentioned academies, they put you about everywhere and for your education. Was there ever a period, you know, you, was, you spent a long period playing left wing, right wing, 10? Yeah, well, like this, season, this season I spent most of the time on the wing. I mm. mean, it's, it's not my com most comfortable position, um, but I've been playing there and 10, left wing and 10 quite a lot this season. And I mean, by doing that, I can show that I can play other positions. But I think the best of me is playing striker, of course. How's it been like playing in them roles? Uh, you know, it's, 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 it's been okay. I mean, the, the academy manager has a goal for me. Uh, he knows where I'm going to get pushed. Mm. Um, where the first team manager wants players. Um, so as long as we have a goal and a reason why, I'm all for doing it. Like, it's, it's been good. Mm, mm, mm. How's the season gone for you? Any anyway? obviously prior to the lockdown, how was the season going for the for the for you as a team, as a member of the team, and you as a person? Yeah, I mean it was going okay. I mean we started off. I started off really well. So I came in um, from Derby. Um, so I came in, and this was my first. It was a big change, like because Shrewsbury, I came for. It was more of a 
first team opportunity chance. Like I'm coming here, look, the league one. I know I can get a first team chance or get to train regularly. Um, so look, I'm coming in. And started off season well. Pre season was flying. I think I was top goal scorer at the time. Uh, we went on pre season tour to Scotland and I was doing proper well. And, you know, I was playing up front and then um, and they changed me out to left wing and things changed. Like, you know, you go through ups and downs. Mm. So I started off, I was struggling. Like, I think the fitness is a lot more different. I like, go up and down, up mm-hmm. and down. Tracking back. So I, had to, I had to adjust my fitness. So that took me a while, I think four weeks to adjust. I was still starting. So it's still showed that the manager had trust in me. But I mean, it was tough, like, to get my head around not scoring as many goals. And then, because that strike, obviously, you're scoring goals. Now, wing are you providing for someone else to go and get that glory? Different out. Don't yeah. always, yeah, man. So, you know, it felt different within myself. Like, if I come off a game and not score, I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? You know, you just got to trust the process and believe in yourself. Mm, mm. You mentioned something great there indirectly again about um, it's a, you've got to be a provider, you've got to look at things differently. Mm. How have you had to change psychologically, like, being on the left wing and stuff and being more of a creator, like looking, getting your head up and rather than on instinct, maybe having a shot, maybe trying to slip yeah. in someone who is who can then have that shot and things like that. Yeah, I mean, um, it's good because by having that mindset, it means you're not a selfish player. I mean, all strikers are selfish. Don't get me wrong, but there's a limit to when you have to be selfish and that will show if you're a good player or not. And I think it was tough at first, like I said, like by not, by that, twist I think it shows that you're maturing if you're able to be able to play the different positions and also understand that that's not always going to be your role and also if the first team manager asks you to switch positions you're going to do it so why not start from a young age which is always good mm, why not get under your belt now so it makes your journey it. a bit easier have you trained with the yeah. first team yeah yeah I've trained with them quite a lot I mean um, What's happening like? yeah you know it's been it's been okay I mean it's different the normally so we get to see how they, they do a lot of match preps. Um, they went far in the FA Cup this year. I think they played Liverpool and got knocked out. Mm. And the, the build-up to that was really good because, I mean, we, tra- we trained with them um, and saw, like, how serious the prep is. Like, they were prepping a week or two before the, the game. Oh, like, the game. serious. Yeah. Um, so it's good to see the players and it's visual. I mean, when I was at my previous club, Derby, at that young age, like, I'm 17, I couldn't, there was not always that opportunity to do that. Mm. Um, so to do that here, I think that's one of the reasons why I came. Mm, mm. That's an interesting look. Right, but let me take it back because you mentioned you're from South. Off air, you mentioned you're from South. Yeah. You mentioned yeah. Derby. Let's, before we talk, with all due respect to Shrewsby, let's, let's rewind the signing bit. How does, where did football start for you? How does a guy from South London end up at Derby? Yeah, man, that's quite an interesting journey. Like, talk us through that, man. Yeah, well, um, I started off at a team called Junior Elite, same with Eric. Oh, that's it. Um, yeah, I know them. Aren't yeah, they? so we started off. I started off there from like under sixes to like under what was it nines, tens, and I was doing really well there. I mean, I was. I think I was one of the best players there. And you know, I didn't get selected. There, so there was a stage where you get picked for Fulham and go to Fulham. I mm. think a lot of the boys went to Fulham. They got to that age, and I wasn't selected. So I was like, rah, okay, I scored like. 40 goals in three seasons, like, consistently. I've, I've been banging in the goals, and where's that was my game. I was like, where's my chance, sort of thing. And I'll never know to this day why I didn't get selected, but, you know, it, by God's grace, it happens. It's you, a reason. You just gotta, yeah, it's a reason, man. So, um, so yeah, I never got selected under 10, so I moved on. I went to another team called uh, Glebe. It's a local side, and I, didn't, I wasn't enjoying football. I think that knocked my confidence so much. Like, it was tough, like, so I ended up quitting football for, for I think, a year and a half, two years. It was mad. I went, I played a bit of rugby because um, I went to a private school and in order to go to a private school, you need to, you have to play rugby to get a scholarship and stuff. Mm. So um, I played rugby. I wasn't really trying to do anything with football. And I think, um, and I think I started seeing my friends, like, playing football and I was like, okay, I'm still, I was still fast. I was still strong. Let me just try Try try. Yeah, man. So I thought, let me just try. So I tried. I was, I was decent still. I was a bit rough. I was a raw, raw diamond. I remember people telling me. So I was like, cool. So I started taking it serious right under 13s, 14s. Mm. Uh, I, I joined a team. I joined a team called Whiteleaf and under 12. So under 12, I joined a team called Whiteleaf. And then um, I took it serious for a year. I had 
no interest, but I scored like 30 goals in the season. I got golden boot. So I was like, oh, cool, why am I not getting no interest? I'm banging in goals again. Mm. Um, why is no one looking at my team? Yeah. So then I went to a team called Kinetic at under 13s. Mm. And, you know, it helped me. It helped me a lot. I mean, uh, the training program, um, it was good. I mean, I was amongst decent players. Um, so, yeah, it was proper, like, was serious stuff. And then um, I was scoring goals. And clubs started never to... Never scoring. Yeah, never stopped scoring. And the clubs... The clubs then started to come and the track, the interest was there. Um, so, yeah, obviously, I, I played a showcase game against Stoke for another team called Lambeth Tigers at that age. Another big. Um, yeah, so I played, I played a showcase game and I tore it up. I think we lost 9 2, but I think I scored two goals. All right, so you did I, just, I showed that I, I can play at this level. So, um, boy, after that, there was interest. Like, Interest from majority of teams in in London, outside of London. Um, I went, I went to Arsenal, Chelsea. I went Palace. I went everywhere. I, mm. you know, I got turned down by. I think Arsenal was the only one that said no. So why what I did is, no. I'm not, I'm not really a training player. I'm put me in a game. I'll score a goal. Why? Why they? Why they? Why they? Why they, why they say no? Um, they said no because um, in training I wasn't uh, that great, and yeah, in order to play. So my process was. I play a game for them. So I said to every club, look, I'll play one training session, one game. You decide if mm. you want me. So Arsenal, I, but Arsenal was one club that I wanted to like sign for. So mm. I was training for weeks there, like three weeks. I was trying, but you know, I didn't play a game. They said, look, our methods is not like that. You can't just do that with Arsenal. So mm. I trained, I was like, come on. Um, but after the three weeks, they said, no, nah, sorry. But um, it was a good experience. I mean, like playing amongst one of some of the best players. Um, yeah, it was great. So then I went to Chelsea. And then um, Chelsea is another big team. So what I said is, look, I'm only coming on trial if I play one game and train once. So I was like, cool. I impressed in the training session. We played against Brighton. And um, that was a tough game. Like, Brighton, yeah. Brighton are always a good academy. Like, everyone knows if you play against Brighton, they're a good academy. So, um, but I played number 10. So I was like, well done. What's going on here? I'm a goal scorer. You brought me in, and I'm no, playing number ten. <laughs> yeah, like, so, but I, I did well. Um, but they said, "Look, come and see you for another game." So I said, "No, no, 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 I'm not just making the same amount of mistake as Arsenal." So I, so I went on to another trial to um, Crystal Palace. They wanted me. I just trained. I didn't play a game. Mm. Um, they said, "Look, we'll sign you up. We want you." Uh, then I went to Wolves. Um, they said, "Look, we want." How did the Wolves one? All right, cool, cool. So let me take you back again. The London thing is one thing because it's a small world. But now you're branching yeah. out to Wolves and out of London. How yeah. did Wolves get into contact? I think because um, because obviously I played that showcase game against Stoke. Oh, because so they still um, retained interest. Yeah, so obviously Stoke. There were loads of scouts there from Midlands, and Wolves were there. I think so. Wolves. Um, I went training there. I was gonna sign. I was so close to signing. I took the team photo with them. I was in, but I I was liking it, and then uh, Derby came in. So then Derby come in. I was like, okay, cool. This is mad. Like my world's getting crazy right now. Okay. Um, so I've gone to Derby and played against Leicester. I think we won four 0 I scored two goals. So I was like, rah, okay. They're showing some serious interest. Like, look, we we got a school for you up here. Um, like my family wanted to move, so it was all like it was serious. No pattern. Um, yeah, with Wolves, they wanted me to stay in Digs, and I was like, nah, man, I'm. I'm not really into that. At such a young age, 13, I was I think 14. I don't want to do that, man. So, so me and my family, we chose Derby. Um, we thought it would be, a, it was it was a really good, like, I enjoyed it at Derby. I mean, um, they, they welcomed me. They were very, um, my cousin plays for Derby as well. Uh, his name's Jaden Bogle, plays for their first team. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, look, 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 it makes sense. My family's there. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's try it out. Um, so we tried out and you know I was there from 14s to 16s and it was probably the best experience of my life mm. um, why? At, at, the, at the start it was hard because like moving from London moving to a new school I think I was black there was I think what was it 400 people in the school and two black boys and it was mad like, what's that like was, psychologically? you know it's tough it's tough because like dealing with things that like, you're not used to dealing with like it's yeah. crazy like some of the stuff is crazy, man. But 
you know, you're there for a reason. So I've got tunnel vision. So I know, look, I'm, I'm here to play football, not for school. Like, I, I took my school serious. But, but I'm here, I'm here time to be a footballer. Yeah, I'm here for a footballer. Mm. So obviously, I've gone there. I'm doing well there. I think I scored like, what? I, my first 10 games at Derby, I scored every game. So um, I was mad playing man. up. I was playing up. It was mad. So, um, I think I scored 25 in my first season. I think I got 29 in the second season. I was in, I was in competition with the other strikers. Like it was healthy competition. Like if if I come up didn't score, if they didn't score, they will be upset that I scored. It was it was a healthy relationship. Mm. Um, but I mean. Things that uh, didn't work out for one reason or another, I'm, I'll never know why. Like, I was, I, it was shocked me and everyone else, everyone around me was telling me, look, you'll get a contract there, your extension, like a scholarship, I mean. Um, I was saying, I don't know what's going on. Like, 16s, you're meant to be playing 18s. Mm. Um, and everyone, I think, I think 12 out of 15 boys got to play with the 18. And I was one of the boys that didn't. Mm. I'm like, wow, like, what's going on here? I can start to see signs that they were moving a bit crazy with certain things. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to start preparing my mindset. If I don't get a contract here, where am I going to go? Mm. Um, I was still banging in goals, but I was playing for myself, not for the team anymore. To know, look, I'm trying to get a move somewhere else. I'm trying to impress. Um, so I think me having that, that um, rejection from when I was young at Fulham, I think that helped me a lot. Because like, mm. if, if I didn't have that, it would have been a shock to my system. Was it, was, um, so, was it a case of Derby actually releasing you and saying, listen, you're not getting a scholar or you left? No, it was a, they said I'm not getting a scholar. It was crazy. Like, they had, we had two meetings. So one before the actual scholarship. And they was like, yeah, you're doing well. Look, we're not going to give you one now because we don't want you to become complacent. And I thought, hold on, that's rubbish because you've given other people a contract and mm. not me. Like, I, and I'm not trying to be funny or anything, but I, scored, I think I scored like 21 goals in that season in under 16. So I'm like, whoa, what, how can you not give me a contract? Sort of thing. Mm. It was cool. I, I listened to what they said. I have agents as well. So they were in the background saying, look, you're going to get a contract, man. We have nothing to worry about. Um, so as months went on, I didn't get a contract. And then I was like, what's going to happen now? It's tough because GCSEs, you know, at the same time, it's mm. going on trial at clubs. Um, so it's a tough procedure to go through and stay focused. Mm. At that time, that was the t- I think that was the toughest moment of my life, like in football, because like to focus on your exams and to get released, it's tough, man. How did you How did you balance it? Like, how did you How did you? Because obviously, life can be overwhelming for everything. But mm. I always say with everyone, I said the sad the beauty, but the sad thing about life is that it goes on. You can feel sorry yeah. for yourself. You can move on, rightly or wrongly, it moves on. Now you could have mm. felt sorry for yourself and not been in this position. And like you said, yeah. you've been going through the rejection that's helped you, but. You've got the pressure of GCSEs, you've got the pressure of yourself, you've got family pressures, you've got Derby rejecting you. How do you, like, just stay afloat, like, hold it up and get through that and, you know, like you said, tunnel vision and move forward? Like, when did you recognise that? Listen, um, you, got it. you know, I think it was my parents that got me through it. Like, my parents are very, like, supportive to everything I do. So if we, if we go into something, we go into 100%. They made a sacrifice as well by coming, moving with me. Um, to Derby and you know like they were they would help me every step of the way like I can't I don't think I would have been here without them mm. um, so they 100% helped me and kept my confidence up because as a striker you need confidence and my confidence was low at that point so um, what's happened now is I've gone on trials and the trialing period has started so it's tough because Talk to um, me about that especially, man, because so, so psychologically, how is it like as well going on trial at these clubs, kind of thinking with every touch, contract, no yeah. contract, here, not there. Talk to me, man. Yeah, see, I did that method again with train once, play once. And as you get older, you know, it's harder to play football. Like, it's, it gets harder, like players get better. And mm. so I'm going on trial at teams and guys are telling me, I know a lot of people because I played against them. Mm. And I'm the type of striker. Um, I'm, I'm a different person on the pitch to off the pitch. I'm horrible on the pitch. Like, you don't want to be my friend. <laughs> um, so I've gone, to, I've gone to teams. I went to London team. I went to Charlton, Blackburn. I went pff, a lot of teams. I think I, I could have gone QPR. I went so many teams. Um, some of them were rejecting me. Some of them were saying yes. Some of them were saying come back. Um, 
I remember I went to Blackburn and one of the boys were like, oh, um, uh, I said, why are you not passing me the ball? He's like, oh, because um, you don't pass. Why am I going to pass you the ball? Um, I won't look as good. I'm thinking, rah. Uh, are you are you are you alright? Like, I'm trying to fight. Yeah, I'm. This is like, serious. Like I'm, I'm coming in trying to take people's spot, and people are threatening. But it was all cool. Like, um, so I'm going around. I think I went Charlton as well. Charlton, Charlton one was different because this one I didn't just play and train. I stayed there for two games and I think a week, train, and that was a lot different because going back to London, it's a lot more dog eat dog like there's a lot more players uh, there's a lot more similar players to me mm. um so I went down to, and yeah, yeah but Charlton was a funny one because so the first game I was meant to play was against Millwall and that's their rivals it got cancelled because of the snow the second game it was against Chelsea yeah and everyone knows Chelsea are the best academy mm, yeah in like yikes not going to get inch ah uh, I think we lost eight 0 yeah. I didn't, I didn't touch the ball at all. Like it was mad. And I was thinking, oh man, this is going bad. Like my confidence was sinking even more. It was nuts. And then, um, so they was like, look, you can come back on trial. We want to see you again. Obviously today, like you didn't get to see, we got spanked. I thought, no man, I can't, I can't do this. I'm not coming back. Um, so I went. I think where did I go after that? I think and then I went on trial at Shrewsbury. And so like. So like it was, they see my clips and the academy manager had an interest in me. And he was the only one that said, "Look, we he had a proper interest. He liked me as a person. Mm. He had a plan um, for you more than just a yeah, plan, a, a piece 100%. of meat, And club, some of the clubs were saying like, just saying, yeah, you can come in. And I'll sit on the bench at a good cat one side. Or I don't want to do that. I need to play for my confidence to be up. Mm. Um, and yeah, I think that, that that's something that helped me. And that's why I chose Shrewsbury because like they had a vested interest in me and they, I needed personal contact with an academy manager. That's one thing. Because that derby, it wasn't always there. It wasn't always there. So, um, mm. And at other clubs, it's not at top teams, you're not always going to get that. Um, mm. So, I mean, you sometimes got to come down to go up a peg. Mm. And, you know, that's what I've done. Two steps to move 10 forward sort of thing. That's it. That's it. Mm, mm, mm. That's interesting the way you said it. So obviously, it's a bit different because you've gone through the London boy moving to Derby and being in a mm. different school. So you've kind of got a bit of a grounding. But what was it like moving to Shrewsbury? What was that initial period like for yourself? Well, that was tough because I mean, there was sometimes people or your friends can make it a lot tougher. So I've built like close relationships with friends in Derby. Um, still to this day, I talk to a lot of the people. Um, and also, a lot of people were shocked. I think uh, I had a lot of my friends saying, "Why are you going there? The League One, or they're they're not Derby. Like Derby were gonna go Prem at one point." I'm like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Look, there's a plan. Like, I know what I'm doing." Sort of thing. It's not like a lot of people not hating, but a lot of people saying, "Like, are you rubbish now? Or you're going to a League One team?" No, no, no. Everyone has a different pathway. Like so my pathway is this way, so I'm gonna go and take it. Um, and I'm privileged to still be in this opportunity now because it's still a good club. Like it's League One, yes, but they do trust their youth. And yeah, that's, that record with that, very yeah. Good. That's 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 one thing that uh, like attracted me. Look, they got youth, and they got a new academy manager that's like wanting to push you. So yeah, you know what? Let's give it a try. It makes sense because as like you so you said a great point. Like obviously, in an ideal world, we'd all love to play for whatever football team we grew up supporting. Yeah. We'd all love to be doing it. I would as well. But at the same time. You know, I do believe at Cat One clubs, especially, you become one of many. You might make it, you might just become mm. one of many. You get to 18 slash 21 before you night your contracts up. And that's it. And then you start that pathway of trials and stuff like that. Where if you could do what you're doing, League One, eventually get some games under your belt, develop as a player. God forbid if Shrewsbury ever said you want to sell you or release you or whatever, people are going to take a chance. And you'd be like, he's a striker, he's got games, he's got X amount of goals. Because I do think mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing for you young players, in my opinion. It's, it's like the world, really. It's like people expect you to want to get have experience, but you can't get experience. As, obviously, as a striker looking at League One, like in terms of a playing style, it would be silly to suggest that you can't play like a target man. And I don't know if that's necessarily how you want to play. I do think with young players, they can get lost in this system because they might not 
be necessarily set out for League One, but they might be able to thrive in the top division in Holland. So what's it like looking at League One? Because you strike me as someone that's, you're obviously looking far ahead as to what environment you're going to be into. How do you prepare yourself? What sort of strikers do you try to make yourself into with the sort of defenders in mind? You know, I think, first of all, I think the, I'm not the biggest of strikers. So I think that's, that's one plan. That's one reason why the um, manager at the moment is moving me about, look, get me in the team first or try and put me amongst them consistently. And then we can start testing me out up front. Uh, striker to see how I cope um, but I think the main thing for me is get through the door so if that's playing the right wing back left wing back left wing Where? 10 but just get as long as I get through them doors then I can start saying look Gaffer I want to play there or can you try me I want to play there um, um, but I think the main thing for me is get through them doors and I've seen I've studied like League One yeah the football is not always the prettiest not always the prettiest but for a young player a lot of young players go and learn to League One from top teams like Arsenal, Chelsea, a lot of players. Mm. Um, they do struggle sometimes, but I mean, it's, it's a lot of it's mentally, like dealing with it mentally and physically. As long as you're mentally strong and physically strong, I think you'll cope fine. And you won't just survive, you'll thrive as well. So that's one thing that I've learned. Mm. Mm. How, 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 how much is mental for you as a footballer? Because I, I, I look at this, I'm just like, sometimes I go power league and I'll score a goal and sometimes I'll stop. I'll be like, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, did I like? Did I mean? I, obviously, I meant it, but did I mean it, or did I like? Was I necessarily thinking like? How much of it is mental? How much of it for you is muscle memory, essentially? Uh, all of it is mental. I think ninety five percent. Because if you're not confident, if you're not confident in yourself, nobody else will be confident in you. Mm. Um, so I think that's one thing I struggled with at first, like joining. Uh, if, if I'm not a confident player, how can I expect them to be confident in me and my abilities? Mm. Um, and I think in this lockdown period, I've used to become that confident person again and get back where I used to be and still have that inside of me um, to build up. I haven't seen many people over the lockdown. I've just been focused on myself, getting my confidence, getting my, not like my ego, my alter ego back and say, look, Liam, you're you. a beast when you're on the pitch. Like, show people. And I think that's, some, that's one thing that's crucial for me, especially me. Like, each individual player has their own thing. Mm. But, I mean, I think from what I've seen, like confidence can affect a player for years. Like, I've seen great, good players, like top players, um, clubs I've been at, just not do well because they're not confident. Mm. Fantastic answer, man. What sort of strikers do you try and look to to take parts out of their game and add to yours? Or do you think, like, oh, like for that? Like, loads. Um, Who's I the look main one? Um, I look at Aguero, Defoe. I try and look at players that are similar to me. So, like, short, stocky, quick, um, sharp. Um, so yeah, Aguero, Defoe, who else is there? There's Costa because of his aggression. Mm. He's one player that I love um, watching. And who else? Lacazette. Lacazette is a one player, mm. another player that I just love to okay, watch. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's a fantastic one. Regarding this season, did you set yourself any targets at the start? Yeah, I mean, um, my targets were to make sure I break into the reserve team. So to play, I think, five, five start five, five times with them. And, you know... I completed that and I wanted to go on to more whether that was training consistently with the first team because some, some other my, one of my other teammates have done that and that makes me even more want to go and do that because I'm just getting a chance it's real like it's not just talk it's going to happen if you perform and unfortunately the season had to end um, but hopefully if the first team go back I'm ready if I get the call up um, to go and prove myself yeah, that's a fantastic answer, man. Finally, I've got two last questions for you, and I wanted to tap back into you at your parents. Now, obviously, it might have gone over people's heads, but they've had to move to Derby. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong, but at a time you said you was at a time you spent a period at Wolves. Um, I don't know if you was if you was living there or if you had to commute from London up there, however many times a week. So, paint a picture of these commitments because people don't see this part of academies. Well, you know, um, one of the co uh, what I was doing with Wolves is I was commuting, so. One of the coaches at Lambeth Tigers, he was commuting with me because obviously parents have to work. They have to um, by stay train. in London at times. Yeah, by train. Wow. So like, I think every Friday, um, I was leaving school um, early, or I didn't go to school on a Friday. For like two weeks, I think it was just going to up to Wolves, train on the afternoon on the Friday, play a game on Saturday. And, you know, it was getting hectic. Like, that was hard. And then after a while, they said, look, we want to sign you. My parents all came up. Uh, for the team photo and everything um, 
and you know they 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 they've been every, there every step of the way. Like they've made sure, they've always been strategic. Like I have they set my they've helped me set my goals. Like I have whiteboards in my my gym or in my room. Like say, look, this is what I'm working towards. Um, and then with the derby move, they 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 were all for coming with me. Like I didn't say, look, come with me, please. Um, but they they were all for coming and saying, look, your only son at the time. We want to we're gonna come and follow your dreams. Like how can we turn down this opportunity? And um, so they came with me. And even with Shrewsbury. So what happened with Shrewsbury is I stayed in the digs for the first six months. And, you know, it's, it's tough. Like, what are you saying? No yard difficult. food in that. Okay. <laughs> hey, you want to be, you know, you wanna be, you wanna be nice. You're being political. You're <laughs> killing for some rice and peas and ain't it? <laughs> oh, man. It was crazy. Well, I used to, uh, like, I was staying there to me and two other guys. And I think we'll try to sneak food in at times or order Subway or... <laughs> <laughs> or the Nando's or something, but um, <laughs> it was crazy, man. Um, but yeah, I stayed in Dukes for the first six months, and I wasn't doing well in my first six months. Apart from the pre-season where I did well, I wasn't doing very well. Like, was it off the fitness. field? Was 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 the environment off the field affecting? Yeah, off the field. Yeah, like I'm going, I'm going back to Dukes and just sitting in my room playing P4. Like, from what time I finish training, four o'clock I get in, three o'clock till when time I go to bed. So it's, it's mentally challenging like to do that. So I said, look, if my family, so the cabin manager, I spoke to him and he said, all right, cool, get your family up. So my family have moved here. And, you know, I, I think I came on a lot more in terms of confidence, um, training better, playing better. Um, like everything's just gone up since my family have come. And I appreciate that for, appreciate them for that. It's mad what seasoned food can do for a guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, it's crazy, crazy man. It's bad. What's Shrewsby like off the field? Um, you know, it's not really like how can I say it? it's it's quiet. It's quiet. Like at the moment, there's nowhere to go. Even if lockdown wasn't here and I was stuck in Shrewsby, there's nothing I can see myself doing mm. other than in the house or meeting teammates, like going to cinema. But you know, there's nothing. There's not a lot to do, which is good in certain aspects because it means no distraction. Um, like focus. I'm here, and I'm here to do a job. That's it. Like I'm not here to muck about. And I think it's almost like when I'm here, it's work mode. When I'm back in London, see my friends, family, I can chill. Like I can switch off from football. I mm. can go power league. Not worry about nothing. Like it's cool. Mm. Business doesn't get mixed with pleasure. I was just that was going to be my follow up question in relation to off the field. Um, and and it's a benefit, but you literally just answered it for me, man. And it's testament to how you look at life as well as football. My final question, and again, it's almost a bit of a, I call it a stupid question for me because I'm pretty sure what you'd say. But just in case there's any young players and things that have been through something like yourself, what do you think is the most important aspect as a young player trying to make it? Because your your story is interesting. You've you know gone through difficulties at Derby, the trials at clubs, you know, being on being on trial with clubs and teammates not necessarily passing the ball. There's a lot to consider. Mm. And also, before I let you answer, you'd have to wonder, people that have gone through your journey, as sad as it is, for every one person that's gotten your, to your position, there's like 20 people who have done this sort of thing and not made it. So mm. what would be your best piece of advice? You know, it would be to stay confident. I think confidence is everything. Um, whether, whatever sport you play, confidence is everything. And I'd say stay focused because I mean a lot of players that I've like played with that were better than me at times, like they were better than me, but didn't stay focused. Um, like they had all the tools there, but they just got distracted with it was with um, girls or whether it was with other things outside of football. Like they just didn't stay focused, and it's always the people that stay focused that make it. Um, mm. So yeah, that's one that's one bit of advice I'd give. In fact, last last question. How do you, what, how, because you mentioned, you just mentioned it, friends. That's a, that's a very important subject. It's, it's mm. very important the people you keep around you, away from football. Mm. How do you yeah. weed out the good, and, it's obvious, but how do you weed out the good and bad friends? Or if not necessarily that, how do you, because there could just be good friends who you do things with, but mm. you need to separate yourself and say, you know, I'm not that, in, in a nice way, I'm not the average kid. I'm trying to do this football thing now. I mm. kind of, when you lot are going out or whatever, allow me. I'm not involved in that. I'll tell you when I am sort of. So, I mean, like, it was tough because when I was obviously at Connecticut and number time, there's a lot of my friends, I was missing out on so many parties, like, going to see friends. I think my parents helped me, look, stay focused. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. We'll see in three years, four years, who's still playing football, who's where they are. And, I mean, right now, I talk, I talk to a lot of people. A lot of my friends are within football. 
um, like so if I see one of my friends like doing something new it will urge me look oh I better start doing that or I want to try that mm. um, I mean some even some of my friends outside of football um, it's, I don't always see them I keep in contact I'm not that type of guy to just shut people off like uh, I keep in contact and I talk but it's not I've seen them once every so often mm. um, because I look I got a goal to hit you if I don't hit that goal I'm on a mission to get to where I need to be. If mm. I don't, then no. If I don't do it, then I'm I'm gonna be annoyed at myself that I didn't control those variables that I could. So um, so yeah. That's a fun. That is a fantastic answer. Like you said, controlling them variables and what you just said there as well is an even bigger gem because you you've touched on personal responsibility. I believe obviously there's all forces at hand as to why obviously things happen to us, but at some point personal responsibility and you're a testament to your family you're a testament to yourself man it's it's, it's been appreciate lovely it, man. speaking to you liam man I, on behalf of everybody thank you for dropping all these gems appreciate it man appreciate it keep doing what you're doing man i love it no worries man you're gassing me now i might go start trying to <laughs> go outside and do some top pins and stuff man. Uh, <laughs> what you can get me on a trial or something now <laughs> love for that bro man let me not nice, take any more of your time appreciate it bro catch you later peace out